Welcome back to the study of statistical characteristics of noise. Now that we have got an answer for why we are studying the noise in an analog circuit design. But I believe that the introduction given in the previous video would have excited you to explore the topic of noise that exists inside the circuit. To make your excitation more meaningful, let's begin with the statistical behavior of a noise signal. This you would have already studied in your communication system courses and you might be much more familiar than me in the statistical study of a noise. But I still encourage you to watch this video not just to have a refresh on the topic but also I want you to check whether I am doing in the right way. Let's begin the statistical study of a noise. As you know, one can characterize the noise in time domain as well as in the frequency domain. Its dual characteristics is always an important part in understanding the noise behavior. The characteristics of noise in time domain is defined by the probability distribution function, which I shortly call it as PDF. While the statistical study of a noise in frequency domain is defined as power spectral density, which is shortly called as PSD. Now, let's explore what each parameter is all about and what information do these parameters carry and how are they interlinked and how each parameters are used in the noise analysis. Probability distribution function. So, it's a parameter that characterizes the noise in time domain. As you all know that noise is a random signal means the noise signal instantaneous value cannot be predicted at any point in time and more specifically the noise is a random process. Now the question is what is a random process and how it is different from the random variable. From the probability theory we know that in random variable the outcome of an experiment is basically mapped to a real number whereas in a random process the outcome of an experiment is mapped to a waveform which is usually a function of time. Consider a resistor being not connected to any potential difference and when you make a measurement through an oscilloscope you will find a non-zero component around the mean value of 0 across it. This non-zero component can be a voltage or a current. If we are measuring a voltage across the resistor as in this case, we can designate the non-zero component as V in of T and we call this as a noise voltage. But if we are measuring a current, then we can designate this non-zero component as a noise current and I would have a noise current being represented by I sub n of t. Note the signal is random and its value is completely unpredictable. So if a noise is so random, how to quantify this noise? One way to quantify this is by using this probability distribution function or in short PDF. Now the question is what is this probability distribution function and what information is contained in it? Let's answer this question by sampling the noise signal at some constant rate and mark the number of time you have sampled a particular value on a plot where the x-axis denotes the sample amplitude and the y-axis denotes the number of samples that had a particular amplitude. So the following animation will help you to understand the probability distribution function where sampled amplitudes are being marked along the x-axis and the y-axis denotes the number of samples that had a particular amplitude in it. Now, when this process of sampling is repeated over a long period of time, 
you end up having a normal distribution with a belt shaped curve having a maximum probability at the mean value of 0. And the probability drastically falls off to nearly a 0 value beyond tries the standard deviation away from the mean value. And this probability distribution function can be represented by this function where uh, the sigma denotes the standard deviation or the root mean square of the distribution and the sigma square represents the average mean square value or the variance of the distribution. Now, let us see how one can use the variance or the RMS value to define the signal to noise ratio. We know the signal to noise ratio or in short SNR is defined as the ratio of signal power to the noise power and one can also define the signal to noise ratio in terms of mean square or in terms of RMS value one can also define something like this. Now that we have got to know that the study of probability distribution function return us the noise power or the variance and using which one can compute the signal to noise ratio. Now it is time to turn our focus onto the frequency domain parameter which is power spectral density or in short PSD. You may wonder why do we need to study power spectral density when you have already have the probability distribution function of a noise. This probability distribution function in general provides no information as how fast the noise voltage or a noise current varies whereas the power spectral density provides such information and apart from the above said reason there is one important driving reason to study the power spectral density which is nothing but by nature most of the noise sources that exist in this world have a predictable power spectral density information and one could use such information to evaluate the mean square value or the variance and which in turn can be used for the calculation of signal to noise ratio. Now let us brief about the power spectral density for a sinusoidal input and later we will see how this power spectral density can be evaluated for a noise and use it for the computation of mean square value or variance of the noise. During this process we will also look at some of the important properties of the power spectral density. So to start off with power spectral density let us consider a simple sinusoidal signal oscillating at a particular frequency f0 and the corresponding expression of this particular signal can be represented by this v of t term. One could express the sine term in terms of Euler form as from which the spectrum of the wave can be expressed as v of f as you could note that we are writing in terms of the frequency domain where we have the amplitude of the signal a by 2 at frequency f0 as well as the amplitude of the signal a by 2 at the frequency minus f0 and the same is then be reflected onto this spectrum. So the graph here which is termed as v of f signifies only the spectrum of the signal. Now let us look at power spectral density of this sinusoidal waveform. But before that let us understand what do we mean by power and energy of a sinusoidal signal. So consider a sinusoidal signal which is given by V of t. When you observe this graph you could note that the average value of the signal seems to be 0. Does this mean that if this signal is applied across a resistor a zero average power is dissipated? Of course not. In order to characterize the average power dissipated by the resistor we have to write the instantaneous power dissipated by the resistor which could be written as 
be instantaneous with respect to the time. And since the signal that we have applied is a voltage, we have the power being returned as V by V square by R. So, now that summing this power over time should result in the energy of the signal. There are two things one has to consider here. Clearly, the summation of the instantaneous power does not result in the average power dissipated by the resistor, but rather it gives us the energy that the sine wave source has supplied to the resistor. And the second, since there is an infinite over the upper bound of the integration, the energy of this particular signal approaches infinity when we integrate over this infinite value. So, a signal that is continuous over time extending from minus infinity to plus infinity, the energy of such signal will give us an infinite energy and they do not belong to the category of energy signal, but rather they fall under the category of power signal. And the way one would calculate the power of such periodic signal is by estimating the average power over one clock period. Now that we have got the average power dissipated by the resistor, but recall from the definition of signal to noise ratio, it was defined as a ratio of mean square value of a signal to the mean square value of a noise. So, to get the mean square value out of this, we need to normalize this expression with respect to the resistor. That is, we need to substitute the value of R to be equal to 1 and this gives us the mean square voltage of the sine wave dropped across the resistor. And taking a square root on this expression would then return us the RMS value of this particular signal. Now, if V of t is a DC source, then the average power of this particular signal will be equal to V square by R and the mean square value of it would then obtained by substituting the value of R to be equal to 1. Now that we have got a hold on what is power spectral density for a well defined periodic signal, which is a predictable signal. But this method of computation becomes complex once we start analyzing the noise, which is not a predictable signal, but rather it is an unpredictable and ill defined signal. So, let us start off with the question. A noise is a random signal and the plot of which shows that it contains not just a single frequency, but many different frequency components in it. Now, for such a signal, one has to evaluate the average power at every frequency component and the collection of these average power at each individual frequencies would then return us the power spectral density. Hope you got it. Let us demonstrate the statement that I have made with a schematic. Consider the noise signal which is denoted as V n of t has a set of frequencies like f1, f2 all the way to fn. And to evaluate the average power at each of those frequencies in the set, you need a bandpass filter having a bandwidth of 1 hertz centered around each and every frequencies from the set. For illustration, let us consider that the bandpass filter is centered at a frequency f1 and the output of this particular filter will then contain only the component of frequency f1 with plus or minus half the value of hertz resulting from the finite bandwidth of this particular bandpass filter. So, as we have already discussed, the way to calculate the average power is by performing a square and then integrating over the period defined by this frequency term f1. As pointed out, the signal that we get out of bandpass filter not only contains the frequency component f1, 
but it also contains plus or minus half the hertz around the frequency term Fn, due to which the formula that we have used earlier to compute the average power has to be slightly modified. So, the slight modification is the inclusion of this limit term when we try to compute the average power of a signal having a finite bandwidth around the frequency f1. Now, the question is, can I call this expression variance or the mean square value? The answer is no. Even though the expression has normalized the resistor value with 1, it still cannot be called as a mean value or a variance. This is because the noise is composed of not just the frequency f1, but it is composed of many such frequency components in it. So, the term Sv of f1 just represents only the normalized average power at the frequency component f1. So, one has to calculate the average power at all frequencies from the set we discussed earlier, which means that we need to calculate the Sv of f2, the Sv of f3 and so on. And each of these power spectrum at each different frequencies can have a different magnitudes and the plot of this shows us the same phenomena here. Now, the question is how to calculate the variance of the noise from these power spectral density. So, in order to answer this question, we have to brush up some concepts from the probability theory and to start up, we start with the definition of variance. We know that one can define the variance of a random variable x as the expectation of squared deviation of a random variable from its mean value. So, it means how far a set of random numbers are spread out from their average value. If the random process x has a probability distribution function, which is given by this f of x term, then one can express the variance as the integral over the mean square deviation times that of the probability distribution function. Now, if this mean value mu x is equal to 0, then the variance would be redefined as an expectation operator over the random variable mean square value. Now, all of these definitions are for random variable, but as we know that the noise is a random process. So, for random process, how do we calculate the variance? To answer this question, we need to know what does a variance mean for a random variable? A variance for a random variable is nothing but the covariance of a random variable with itself. So, when we speak about random process, which is a function of time, a variance is nothing but the autocorrelation of a random process with itself. As the name suggests, it compares the correlation between the signal at different instant in time. As we know, a noise is a stationary random process whose random variables at a particular instant in time is chosen randomly from the ensemble of values. This means that the noise is so random that a particular value will never repeat at any time in the future. In other words, the autocorrelation function will return a value of 0 except when tau that is equal to 0. So, due to which the autocorrelation function for a stationary random process can then be redefined in this particular way, where the autocorrelation function has a non-zero term only at tau that is equal to 0, whereas it goes to 0 in all other times. Note that this particular term resembles the variance definition of random variable and in turn Rx of 0 defines the variance or the mean square value for a random process. Now that we have the definition for the variance of a random process, but how this could be related to power spectral density? Again, you would have learnt 
from the communication system course about a relation known as Wiener Kitchen theorem. This theorem relates the autocorrelation function of a random process in time domain to a power spectral density of a random process in the frequency domain. And this relation was made possible by making use of the Fourier transform where the time domain autocorrelation function is converted into a power spectral density that belongs to frequency domain by making use of this Fourier transform. And similarly, by making use of this inverse Fourier transform, one can convert the frequency domain power spectral density into a time domain autocorrelation quantity. As we know, for a noise, the value of this autocorrelation exists only when tau that is equal to 0 and everywhere else, the autocorrelation function will have a value of 0 and due to which one can relate the variance or the average power to the power spectral density through this simple integral. And since the integral runs from minus infinity to plus infinity, the average power that is calculated out of this integral is called as total noise power. If on the other hand, if this integral is not running from minus infinity to plus infinity, but rather it has been restricted to a specific band of frequencies, then the integral will give us the variance or just the average power. Okay. So, this is the case when the integral is not between minus infinity to plus infinity, whereas this is the case when the integral runs from, uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. Yeah. So, now if this random process x of t, if it is a voltage noise, then the power spectral density is returned as S V of F with a unit of V square per hertz representing the spectral density with a unit of 1 upon hertz. Now that we have studied the statistical characteristics of a noise in the frequency domain through the power spectral density and we also try to interrelate this power spectral density of the frequency domain to the variance or the average power which was in the time domain through the relation known as Wiener Kitchen relation. And we will be using this Wiener Kitchen relation extensively when we deal with the noise analysis. So, in the next video, we will discuss about the different sources of noise that exist in the CMOS circuits. Thank you.